and this is going to be edited. So it if I say something absolutely edited. stupid, which be might be 90%, 90%. Exactly. We'll just say like, hi, Jeremy, thank you right now for making us sound so much better than we're about to. We really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. If you've seen my cooking videos, it's like 1% of what she actually did. <laughs> I frequently like have way too much scarf going on and then that feels weird. I'm in my home in Berlin. Um, I'm joined by my husband Tom and two animals. Well, I went to Okinawa, Japan for spring break to, um, to conduct research for my new play. And I planned to be there for a week and a half. And because of flight cancellation and because the classes moved to virtual and so I had to strategize which day I can actually take a flight so as not to miss a class that I got stuck for um, another week and a half which actually turned out to be the most incredible research time. I actually spent that time, um, I went to um, a, a protest every day um, against the new construction of a new marine base in Henoko Bay, um, which was an interesting experience. And I think, um, um, and I managed, um, now that we had entered this social distancing period, I uh, live broadcasted myself from the protest to my friends and students in the US, which was an interesting experience. Right. Um, so I went from that intense like a time of togetherness with people to right. self-quarantine <laughs> when I came home. And for the last two weeks, I'm still teaching. My students are actually doing amazing work in this Zoom format. Um, and that has been great joy and it's been a blessing. And um, because my husband is home, he's a, he's a chef at a restaurant. Um, he owns two restaurants and um, he, of course the restaurants are closed. And um, we've been making little cooking videos of him reluctantly cooking at home. <laughs> And that's been fun. Um, other than that, it's been a time of, oh, and I mean meetings for shows that may never happen. And um, I, I have one later this afternoon, but uh, we're just, you know, moving along as if it's gonna happen. Because even if it doesn't happen, we can't stop the creative process. You know what I mean? We can't like stop our inspiration from coming out of our brains, so we'll just persist. Mm, well, like I said, I've been making these cooking videos, which is my new hobby. Um, so my husband cooks and I, and I edit. Um, so that's been the thing that I'm concretely making. And I'm also um, starting to write the play that I was um, researching for while I was in Okinawa. And um, in terms of what I'm watching and reading, um, I'm a judge for a student playwriting contest at Georgetown. So I'm reading a lot of student plays at the moment. Um, and in a strange way, I haven't even watched a single movie since I, since I came home. Um, I feel like I spent so much time on screen for teaching and um, writing and editing video that I am not in the mood to consume any other things through my screen. So it's really strange, you know, I expected to um, be spending more time consuming narratives made by other people and I'm, and I'm not, I'm, I can't um, seem to find the time to do it actually. I don't 
no, I haven't experienced anything like this in my life. Um, and at the same time, I really, um, I'm really thankful for the situation that I'm in. I know that um, people are uh, having a very difficult time and, um, and some people are more in a more vulnerable situation than others. Um, I really, I really can't say I'm suffering actually. And um, I really think I'm one of the more fortunate people that I have um, schedule. I have students to inspire me and um, they bring me joy. And um, I mean, in, in two weeks ago in Okinawa, I was interviewing 90 year old woman who survived the battle of Okinawa with a blind mother and a younger brother. So it just like in, in, it feels relatively mild to me, you know, but I can't think of, I can't, I can't speak for other people. And I know that, um, like I said, um, our restaurant staff who are undocumented, undocumented immigrants, they're having a much harder time and we're trying to raise money to continue to pay them. But I, um, I like that seems unlike any other time too. I really feel like people are um, looking out for others. Well, in my immediate um, environment, at least. So I am optimistic and unrealistic. So I, I had several thoughts about this, or actually a million, um, but I'll consolidate them into a couple of points. One, I believe that people are going to come to the theater because people miss it. People miss it. And people didn't know that they missed it so much. No, don't you think? I mean, people are tired. I mean, people, I, people used to want to watch Netflix rather than going to the theater. But now I think people would want to go to the theater, experience something live. So I believe, and I'm being optimistic, but maybe saying it will make it happen also. People are gonna come back to the theater, very excited, very excited to be present. And um, second, um, there, there's something that a student of mine said in class the other day that moved me tremendously. She said something like, um, so she did a really brilliant project for my class um, on Zoom, using the Zoom format really well to, um, in performance. But she said something like, this moment is making her realize that in addition to food and shelter and all these things that we think are necessary to humans, storytelling is, is one of them. And she firmly believes now more than any other time that we cannot live without storytelling and namely theater. And she said she was so thankful to have chosen this major in theater and performance studies mm -hmm. um, more than any other times before. And that really, that really moved me. I think not having it really makes us realize how important it is to us. And, um, and for this student, this 20 year old to realize that theater is a necessity in the world meant so much to me. So that, um, and honestly, I'm really excited. I, I, you know, I talk to my colleagues who are teaching acting and such, you know, I just um, got off another Zoom call with Sarah Marshall earlier today, um, who's just so wonderful. And we talked about teaching in this way, teaching theater in this way, but um, Zoom is not replacing theater, right? But I think that because in such a short time, I'm seeing so much brilliant work from my students smartly using this virtual format. 
And these are the people who are going to transform American theater in decades to come, right? So I feel like, I hope that we're going to go back to be able to do, to do the old thing again, because I like the old thing and <laughs> I would like to keep doing it. And I wonder if there's going to be a lot of innovations coming out of the younger generation um, because of this experience. And I'm excited to see that. And I feel like I still want to do the old thing, but I'm excited to see the new thing too. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm actually looking forward to looking, I'm looking forward to um, the rest of this time too. Like mm -hmm. I think, out of I believe, I, yes, yes, I believe in turning a crisis into opportunities. So I'm thinking about what are the things that we can do now um, that we can't do any other time, right? I think the um, live broadcast from Okinawan protests was one of them. Right. Not many people would be interested in tuning in unless they were socially distancing themselves at home, right? So they were at the protest virtually with me, although they weren't. And um, so, th you know, you know what, what are things I can do that I wouldn't do any other time? Like editing cooking videos is like something I would do that I wouldn't do any other time. Um, that. And in terms of when this is all over, I, while I'm having a great time with students it, over Zoom, I can't wait to get back to seeing them in person in a, in a classroom. And um, I, can't get, get, I can't wait to get back to a rehearsal room where I can share space um, with other artists and I, I miss hugs, actually, <laughs> I do. Now, I feel like we all three of us are pretty lucky in that we have um, other people that we're with right now. And I have, you know, you have, you have two cats. I have two children. Um, and my son has become like so much more physical um in the last couple weeks he's his mm. favorite game is to say like oddy oddy and pretend to be an otter and like try to climb on top of me oh. this is also like has a little to do with like our homeschool regimen which is like what animals should we learn about today mm -hmm. like we can go back to worksheets but let's just um so he also learned that um i will share with you all that otters have like these special pouches under their armpits where they store both food and tools. So Ben will be like, I'm an otter, I'm an otter. I have a hammer, I have a sandwich. So like, um, but I too, I look forward to like casual, casual physical contact with my acquaintances. Oh. <laughs> you're taking a photo of us, Natsu? No, no, no. Oh no, you're Storing taking- all my important things. Of course, you're a little soon. 